Hello friends. Today I'm over here to discuss um, the ASLR bypass exploit for uh, an iPad version 2. Uh, what it has been observed is that uh, iOS 4.3 has enabled a couple of security mechanisms which are ASLR and uh, an X-Bit being set. Um, ASLR is basically address-based layout randomization. What that means is basically uh, the addresses at which the executables um, or the libraries would be loaded would be randomized. However, there is um, a, sort of there are two caveats for the way iOS has implemented ASLR. It seems like it has implemented ASLR so that um, every time you reboot your iPad is when um, the library's uh, addresses get randomized. So that's one of the caveats, which means that if you know what the address for a specific library routine is, and if you want to use it as we had used it um, in return to libc functionality earlier, it is still possible for an attacker to do that until um, you, the user hasn't um, obviously um, rebooted the iPad. So if you had an iPad that you wanted to exploit, possibly to do sort of a jailbreak for the iPad, and uh, you knew that uh, there was a program that has sort of uh, a buffer overflow. Uh, an attacker could possibly use um, the factor uh, based on the uh, you know guessing aspect, uh, guess the correct address, um, and assume that if the iPad hasn't been rebooted, uh, he could use that address directly. The other aspect of ASLR that uh, that I'm going to show you very quickly is that um, only 12 bits out of 32 bit address are actually randomized. What that means is basically that there are two days to 12 possibilities that a specific address can reside at. If you think about it, which means uh, if you use a calculator very quickly, what that means is basically, uh, pardon me, I'm trying to quickly. Get the Windows calculator to do what I expect. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like so. I'm going to use a calculator that Google provides. Uh, so, 2 raised to 12 that's 4096 iterations. So, if you think about it on a local exploit, all an attacker needs to do is figure out a way to execute the program 4096 times uh, with different addresses. And those addresses should be, and one of that address will obviously work and allow the attacker to actually perform the exploit. So it's a brute force and a rudimentary approach, but however, due to the fact that the number of bits that the IRS considered to randomize were only 12, um, it allows basically an attacker to bypass the ASLR for a remote exploit, especially in case of jailbreaking or rooting um, an iPad. Um, Similar exploits have been used before. Uh, one of the good examples of using a brute force method was an IE7 in the Aurora exploit, uh, which used a GIF as well as a TIFF image exploit um, that did the same thing. Um, and since IE7 never crashed, it was possible for an attacker to use heap spray um, and then bypass the ASLR approach of IE7 um, by using uh, a brute force methods. So similarly, in this case, we are going to use the same method. Um, I've written a simple test script, um, which basically uses two for loops. Uh, I'll show you which two, uh, which uh, 12 bits are basically randomized very quickly right now. So um, let's do a GDB exploit. That's not the right program, GDB exploit. All right. Break at uh, X to a two four. Run the program. And let's look at the system function. So it says thirty seven six eight eight one four. If you remember from my earlier videos that we had then um, for return to libc, uh, we had observed that it was thirty seven C four nine eight one four, and now it shows it as thirty seven E six eight eight one four. So if you observe that only the bytes, only the second byte and the first half of the third byte 
is actually being randomized. That's how I'm getting to the aspect of 12 bits being randomized. So what I plan to do is write a simple test program, as I mentioned before, um, which is called a Python, which is a simple Python script. Yeah, in this case, I'm just going through C0 to FF. However, um, technically, you can make it to go from 00, 0 to FF. And um, as we had observed, that only the first bit uh, or first half of the third byte is being randomized. That's when I'm using between 0 to F um, so that it basically gets the correct address. And for basically every permutation of 00, 0 to FF, it does a permutation of 0 to F 16 times uh, to get to the correct address. Uh, one thing that I've noticed that the program sort of halts after certain times or certain minutes. So what I plan to do is, um, in this case, uh, I'm executing an ls-ltr um, instruction followed by the address for system. Uh, I've also kept um, another root shell open or a putty connection open uh, just because of the fact that, that uh, the exploit program sort of sometimes hangs. And that causes some problem for uh, the Python script. Uh, all right, let's try doing this. So there we go. And the Python program is running. Um, let's see if it gets to the E68814. Now remember, uh, I have used 15 as the address because of the conversion from um, ARM assembly to thumb assembly. Uh, let's give it a few more minutes and this should basically show um, that it's possible to use bypass ASLR especially on a local exploit um, by using a brute force method because of the number of iterations that are required even if it was um, you know all four bytes that have been uh, that had been randomized it would still be possible it's just that it's going to take a little bit longer for an attacker in that case uh, to, to to do this Right, we have the D4 addresses. As I told you that, it seems like for some reason the exploit program does not end properly. So what I'll need to do is basically just find the right instruction and then kill the program again. And then let this program go again. So uh, seems like the Python sort of opens an exploit. Um, however, it's not able to kill that process correctly. The operating system sort of hangs on that process being killed, and hence the attacker might have to use these techniques. You can use uh, another Python script, which basically does the same thing. I'm just doing it manually for education purposes. And so um, we have the DF address. Uh, coming close by guys to the E6 address and alt it so uh, reason I haunted the program is that I wanted to show that it did work. Um, if you look at it, it seems like at the address, um, it did do an ls-ltr, which is at E6, uh, 8815. So that's what I wanted to show. Now an attacker can happily take this address um, and basically use that against the exploit with any other command that he needs so he doesn't need to uh, you know know the address of the program so in this case um, as in the earlier scenarios just trying to make sure that this is the right amount of characters that are required and what i plan to do is call them Seems like there's some issue, guys. So bear with me for a second. Just 
to make sure that I get the correct address. that over here seems like uh, some issue with and there is ls minus ltr being executed i'm just going to make sure that i can execute uh, any other commands as well just to be sure all right so let's try executing and we can see that it's slash by slash root. Um, let's try to execute another command, which would be RTE. And basically, we can execute a bunch of commands by using a return to libc. And as we had seen in the previous case, going up and using um, brute force methodology for local exploitation, which would work perfectly fine to bypass an ASLR for um, a local exploit and jailbreak possibly an iPad. Uh, that's pretty much it for bypassing ASLR. Thanks again everyone for watching this video tutorial. Have a good one.